Hey guys, it's Alicia. Today I have another what's for dinner for you. My husband and I do Weight Watchers or the WW Green Plan. And so I thought I would show you some of the things that we eat on that in a week. Now we also have two children. And so I wanted to show you some meals that are definitely family friendly that both of my kids really enjoy too. Three of the meals that I'm gonna be showing you have been in my meal rotation for years now. They're just kind of my go-tos or my family favorites. I've been making them for years even though I have not been doing Weight Watchers the whole time the last several years, but they're just such good go-tos that I have kept them in my rotation. So I'll be showing you those three and then I'll also show you a new one that I tried out this week that was a big hit with my family. I will put links to the three recipes that I've already done videos on before and in the description boxes of those videos you will find ingredients and the instructions for those. For the one that's new I will put the ingredients and instructions on that down below in the description box on this video. Now about four meals is pretty typical for a week for us because usually at least one of those meals will last more than one night and then we normally have a cheat day on Friday night which is typically Subway and I forgot to show that. So this first meal is probably one of my oldest Weight Watcher recipes that I have. It's at least 10 years old and I've been making it that whole 10 years because we just really, really enjoy it. Plus it's a crock pot meal, which I love crock pot meals. So the first thing I did there was add a little chicken broth in. Now I'm adding some brown basmati rice. Now, if you saw there that said quick cook, that's not really what you wanna use. You wanna just use the regular stuff, the quick cook, cooks too quickly just as it says in the crock pot and it ends up being kind of mushy but that is all I had on hand and I wanted to make this so I went ahead and just used it anyway and it tasted fine it just like I said the rice was a little bit mushier than I would have liked so after the rice I'm adding in some veggies here I've got a medium yellow onion about a pound of carrots and eight ounces of sliced mushrooms now, a lot of times I will add celery to this and I didn't have any on hand or else I would have. There, you can add basically whatever veggies to this you want. These three I typically always add in there and then, like I said, normally I will add in celery too, but this time I did not just because I didn't have any on hand. And here I'm adding a little Worcestershire. I cannot say that word. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. I don't know, whatever, you know what it is. I'm adding some of that in. That actually adds a really great flavor to this. Someday maybe I'll learn how to pronounce it, but uh, not today. Next up, I put a little of this Dijon mustard in here. If you don't like mustard, you don't have to add this, but I do think it adds a really great flavor to this. Next up is a little ground pepper. Now you can put salt in this if you want. I don't anymore. If I wanna add salt to it, I will just add it to the individual serving. Next up is a little bit of sage. I like to use sage with poultry. So in a lot of my chicken and turkey dishes, I will use sage. Now I stir this all up nice and well. And I did forget to put my garlic in and I went back and put a little bit of garlic in this too. And now I take two chicken breasts, frozen chicken breasts, and I nestle those in there the best that I can. And then you're gonna just cook this on low for probably about seven hours or until that chicken breast has reached an internal temperature of 165. Then you're gonna shred that up, mix it up, and you are ready. And here's what it looks like when it is done. As you can see, that rice is a little bit mushy, definitely mushier than I would have liked. But as I said, I didn't have anything else on hand but the quick rice. So it worked. It just didn't work as well as it would have if it had just been normal rice. And here's a serving of that crock pot chicken, mushrooms and rice casserole. And we also had a side of steamed broccoli with that. And that was our dinner. Next up, I had just gotten this new wok at Aldi and I wanted to use it, see how it worked. And so I figured why not make some beef and broccoli stir fry. So first I'm starting off with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Once I've got that olive oil all nice and heated up, 
I'm going to take my beef sirloin here. This is lean beef sirloin. And I've just thrown it in a bag with a little bit of cornstarch and salt and shook it up so that that beef is nice and coated. And that's just a nice easy way to get any type of meat that you're working with coated really easily. Now I'm just gonna cook this beef in here for probably about five minutes until it's nice and browned. And then I'm gonna remove it from the pan and set it aside. Now I lost my footage after this, but basically what this is showing right here is after I removed the meat, I added in some chicken broth and I'm just stirring that around to get those little brown bits from cooking the meat in that pan. And I'm just getting them all down into that broth. And that is gonna add some good flavor. Now I'm gonna add about half of this 32 ounce bag of fresh broccoli. I got this at Sam's Club. I'm gonna use half of it for this meal and then the other half for my meal that's coming up. So I'm gonna throw half of that roughly in there. And I'm gonna just cook this broccoli for a few minutes until it starts to soften. I don't wanna cook it all the way through, but I just wanna get it to where it's starting to soften. I've let this cook for a few minutes, and now I'm gonna add in a little bit of minced garlic and a little bit of crushed red pepper. Now you don't have to add this at all if you don't want to. I just add a little bit because it is a little bit spicy and my kids won't like it if it's got too much in there. And then I will normally add some to the top later. Next up, I'm gonna add a little ground ginger, probably only about an eighth of a teaspoon of this. I typically always use fresh, but I ran out and didn't realize it. So I'm gonna sub in with a little ground ginger instead, but typically this would have about a tablespoon of fresh. Now I'm gonna just stir this around and let it cook for about a minute until that garlic starts to be aromatic. So here I have a little bit of chicken broth, water, soy sauce, and cornstarch, and I've just mixed that together real well. And then I'm going to pour it in with my broccoli. Then I'm gonna lower the heat, let this come to a simmer, and just continue to simmer until that liquid starts to thicken up a little bit. And that'll take a few minutes. Now that that's been simmering for a while and thickened up, I'm gonna add my beef back in and I'm gonna just stir this all together and then it is ready to eat. And by the way, I ended up really, really liking how this wok worked that I got at Aldi. It worked really well for cooking in and it was also super easy to clean up. So if you see a wok at Aldi, I definitely recommend picking one up. And here it is dished up. Now this makes about four servings and typically we will have this with something like brown rice or even pasta. Um, but tonight I just had it all by itself because I wasn't feeling the rice or anything else. So um, it tastes great all by itself, but it does also taste good with something along with it. Like I said, brown rice is our normal go-to for this. But again, that does add more points if you're gonna do brown rice. So. I just had a plain and it was delicious. Next up is baked broccoli mac and cheese. And this is definitely one of my kids' favorites. So I've got a variety of different pastas going on here, as you can see. Typically, I would make this with just the whole wheat macaroni noodles, but I had several different pastas where I just had a little bit of them left and I wanted to get them used up. So I figured I would just throw them all together in this casserole. Uh, let me know if any of you guys do that. Do you ever mix and match your pastas when you have just a little bit left of each one? Uh, I definitely do, and it seems to work pretty well. So I started with throwing that pasta in a large pot here with boiling water, and then I also added in my broccoli that I had remaining from my previous dish. So I'm gonna just let this cook until that pasta is al dente. And then over here, I have a large pan heating up and I'm gonna add some butter to it and let that butter get all nice and melted. Once that butter is melted, I'm gonna add in some onion 
And I'm gonna just let that onion cook until it starts to soften. Once those onions have softened, I'm gonna add in some garlic. I absolutely love garlic and onions and use both of them in a lot of the different things that I make. And I'm gonna just let this garlic cook in here for about a minute. Now I'm gonna add in a little bit of flour and I'm gonna just cook this until that flour kind of starts to brown a little bit just to uh, get rid of the raw flavor of it. And now I'm gonna add some chicken broth into this and I'm gonna just stir it around. And then I'm gonna add some milk. And I'm going to just stir this continuously as I turn up the heat and bring this mixture to a boil. And you're just gonna keep stirring and cooking it until the mixture starts to thicken up. My pasta over here is ready, so I'm gonna drain that and set it aside. My sauce is thickened up, so I've taken it off the heat, and I'm gonna add a little fresh ground pepper to this. If you wanna add salt, you can. Uh, we usually don't. If I feel like it needs salt after, I will add it to the individual servings. Next up, I'm gonna add a little Dijon mustard. Now, if you don't like mustard, you definitely don't need to add this in. I just think mustard adds a great flavor to macaroni and cheese, whether it's skinny version or a not so skinny version. I just really enjoy the flavor that mustard adds. Next up is the cheese. Now, typically I like to use a 50% fat cheese, but I couldn't find that at the store. The only thing I could find was fat free totally and then 2% milk cheese. So what I'm doing here to kind of get my 50% fat cheese is I'm doing half 100% fat free and half 2% milk cheese. So I figure that's gonna be pretty close to a 50% fat cheese. And it tasted really good, so that worked pretty well. That's actually the first time I have used 100% fat free cheese. I was a little worried because that sounds kind of gross to me, but it worked out. So here I am adding in my broccoli and pasta, and I'm gonna just mix this all together real well. Now that I've got this all mixed together, I'm gonna put it in this nine by nine baking dish that I've sprayed with some fat-free cooking spray. And then I'm gonna just pour this in the dish. And yes, I'm still using a Christmas pot holder. Now I'm gonna add some breadcrumbs to the top of this. And a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Then I'm gonna bake at 375 for 15 to 20 minutes. I baked this for 20 minutes and then I went ahead and broiled it for about five just to kind of brown it up a little bit better. I don't always do that because I am not the best with the broiler. I tend to overcook things as I kind of did here. So um, you can broil it if you want, but you don't need to. And here is a serving size cut out. Now this is all we had for dinner tonight. It's already got veggies in it, so I didn't want to do a side of veggies, but you absolutely could. Um, like I said, this is definitely one of my kids' favorite Weight Watcher meals. They love it. It's got that macaroni flavor, but it's also healthier, and it gets those veggies in there. So definitely one of my go-tos and one of not only my kids' favorites, but my favorites. The last meal of the week was Taco Bombs, and this is a totally new recipe for me. I've never made them before, uh, but they start out with the dough that I love, and so... I wanted to try them because I love that pizza dough and I want to find different ways to use it. And so this was one and it ended up being a really big hit with my kids. So I wanted to share it. So first you're going to start with the two ingredient pizza dough. I have a video on this that I will link that shows how you make that. It's really, really simple. It's just Greek yogurt and self-rising flour. So before making that dough, I made the filling for these. And to do that, I just took a little cooking spray, sprayed it in a medium sized pan, and then I added a half pound of ground turkey. You can also use ground beef if you want. Just make sure you're using a low fat version of either one. 
And then I added a medium chopped onion. That is quite a bit of onion. You definitely don't have to use that much or any if you don't like onion. So I've got this on medium high heat and I'm going to just start cooking both of these together. Then I add in a little bit of chili powder. And some ground cumin. And then also a little bit of this granulated garlic. Stir that all up and then just let this finish cooking until that turkey's browned and the onions have softened. And now I add in some corn and some salsa and just mix that all up real well and let that cook for a minute or two to get rid of any of the excess liquid. And then I just set this aside and let it cool slightly. While that's cooling, I go ahead and get my dough ready to go. And I just take this and cut it into eight equal parts or as equal of parts as I can. And then I take each piece of dough and roll it out into about a five inch diameter circle. And then I go ahead and place it on a cookie sheet. And I'm gonna put some cheese on these. And for the cheese, I'm using half of the 100% fat free and half of the 2% milk cheese again to kind of make up a 50% fat free cheese. So I'm gonna put about a tablespoon of cheese on each one of these. And then I'm gonna add a quarter cup of the meat mixture on top of the cheese. And now I'm gonna just kind of pull the sides of the dough up and I'm gonna pinch them together to close these up. And then I'm going to flip them over, seam side down on the cookie sheet. And this was my first one, so I had a little bit of trouble, but they got easier after that. I've got these all rolled up and I went ahead and put them on some parchment paper so they wouldn't stick. And here I've got a lightly beaten egg and I'm gonna just brush that on the tops of these. Now I'm gonna put the remaining cheese on the tops of these as evenly as I can. And then I'm gonna place a jalapeno slice on four of these. My kids definitely would not want them on there, so I'm gonna just put it on four. And now these are ready to go in the oven at 425 for 15 minutes. And here's what they look like when they're done. I think they turned out pretty well. They held together really well. Uh, the only one that had anything wrong with it was this one right here. It's got a little hole in it. But other than that, that came out pretty good. A serving size of these is two. And I've just got them along with a little bit of salsa and a little bit of Greek yogurt, which is what I use instead of sour cream. I think it's just as good. Sour cream would definitely be good with these too if you don't wanna use Greek yogurt. Now I'm gonna have my hubby try these for the first time and let us know what he thinks of them. The hot? Those are wonderful. Are they wonderful? Oh my goodness. They smell wonderful. They're fun too. Yeah. You know? They make different, you can make different versions too. Mmm. Thumbs Worth up? Nine. Worth nine points. Okay, cool. The whole family ended up really enjoying these, so I will definitely be making them again. Um, I might do a different version of them though. But that is what we had for dinner this week. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one.